We just had the biggest Fortnite tournament since World Cup, the $4 million global championship in Copenhagen. We had a very familiar face, Mero, the five-time NAFNCS champion, take it home with what maybe to you will be a very unfamiliar face, Cooper, who going into this year of competitive Fortnite only had $5,000 earned. This is his third FNCS grand final ever. And he only played with Mero because of a coin flip. I'm going to go through that whole crazy story. We also had Cami and Seti, the favorites to win it, or one of the major favorites to win it, coming in second, in my opinion, cementing themselves as the all-time land goats in Fortnite. We had Chicho and Trulex coming in third, who were contested six games out of six, showing that even if you are contested, you can go on to pop off. We did, however, have big upsets. Mr. Savage and Vadil, Thomas and Malabuka really struggling. We also had an Asia team, a small region team, Team, not just make it to the finals, close it out in the top five. I want to cover all of the action. Let's jump into it. You probably already know this if you're watching this video. Mero and Cooper did take home the first place $1 million prize and hoisted the trophy at the end of the global championship. This is a team that a lot of people were maybe talking about or you probably know about them, but they definitely weren't a lot of people's favorite to win it. And after a really rough day one and day two in the qualifiers, people were even less sure. I've been making a whole bunch of content with Cooper on my channel. You maybe watch this video where I went through his solo victory cup games and I claimed he is one of the best solo players in the world right now. A lot of people in the comment section judged me, but Cooper has proven just how good he is. But they were struggling. The first few days of the qualifiers, they weren't looking too hot and it started to make me a little bit worried. Cooper himself on stream today, his first stream after winning it, talked about how he thinks if they qualified day one, they actually wouldn't have gone on to win. He said they maybe would have got a top 10, but them underperforming so badly in day one, scared him so much he literally went home crying and him and Mero got together and were like we're way too good to be struggling this hard like we are too good to be not qualifying so they ended up bringing it together with their coach Chocolat and they absolutely popped off and they dominated they didn't just win they closed it out with 330 points Cami and Seti came in second on 271 that is a ridiculous performance in a grand finals land scenario now not only that their stats if you look at their eliminations they were the first and second most eliminations as a duo. So this wasn't just Mero, you know, the five-time FNCS champ completely carrying Cooper. Their stats were ridiculous. Not only that, if you look at their damage done as well, Cooper was the most damage done from zones four to eight. Mero was the most damage done in endgame. They were just consistently dominating. And a lot of people were talking about, you know, how they got a lot of favorable zones. There were a lot of zones pulling towards their POI. But even with this, they did phenomenally well. There was a lot of teams around them who struggled far more than them. And like I said in the intro, in case you don't know this, obviously you probably heard about Mero retiring. It was a bit of a meme. Everyone's saying, oh, he retired for three days. Basically, Mero was playing with Booga, the, the, the World Cup champion, pretty much the most notable face in Fortnite. They'd won multiple FNCSs together, but Mero just, he was burnt out. He was over it. He didn't want to be in the spotlight anymore. He dropped Booga, stopped playing with him, genuinely retired from the game, even leaving Dignitas as an org, and then decided Decided, hey, I have a bit of time on my hands. I'm still really good at Fortnite. Maybe I'll just play with a friend of mine or someone more underrated. He ended up messaging Cooper and said, heads or tails? Cooper picked tails. Mero flipped a coin. Tails was correct. So he started playing with him. I've since reached out to Mero and I can confirm that it was between Cooper and Crisp. Noxie and Crisp were actually doing really well at Copenhagen as well. But potentially we would have never seen the best duo in the world if that coin flip went for heads. They started playing together. They came second in their first FNCS together, and now they've gone on to win Copenhagen. I don't think you maybe understand just how ridiculous this is from Cooper. He's only played in three FNCS grand finals. He's come ninth, second, and now first. It is insane, that blow up. If like we, There's a lot of people who have like, you know, a few thousand dollars in earned who you've probably never heard of as a pro player. That was Cooper. He was $5,000 earned coming into this competitive season, and he's closing it out as the best best duo in the world because of a coin flip. A lot of people discussing, does this cement Mero as the all-time GOAT of Fortnite? And that's honestly up to you to decide. I think, I mean, I already made an entire story video on him talking about how I think he is the best controller player of all time. Again, a lot of people in the comment section, they're doubting my opinion on that one as well. This definitely cements him as the best controller player of all time. He already had that title with five FNCS champions, but now with a land win as well in the hardest lobby we have ever seen in 
in Fortnite, it's all but confirmed. Now, if you want to decide that he's the all-time GOAT, he's up there with Booga, Aqua, Taysen, players like that, that's up to you. I definitely think he's got that crown, and I think Cami and Seti need to be referred to as our land GOATs. Obviously, Booga won World Cup, you know, Aqua Nyrox won World Cup, but since World Cup, Cami and Seti have absolutely dominated in basically every single land they've played in. They came first and second at DreamHack Sweden, pretty much the best solo land event we've ever had. They won Saudi together, they won Invitational together, and now they've come second place at Copenhagen, and they were conned by Stain and Datas. Now, I don't think they were conned every single game. We only got to see a couple of their fights. You maybe missed it, but Cami actually managed to 360 or 180 no scope one of them off spawn game one to win the game one spawn fight. Like, the most ridiculous way you could ever clutch up for a LAN event this big, and they still went on to come second. They played absolutely phenomenally. Trulex and Chicho in third place. They were contested on the south side of Slappy all six games by Quanti and TK, who they held to come in last place. Eight points total for Quanti and TK. So Chicho and Trulex absolutely dominated this tournament. Pixie and Cheatin in fourth place. Now, Pixie and Cheatin, if you don't know, they only ended up going to Copenhagen because one of the Russian teams, who was a Russian resident, actually got disqualified. Howley's team ended up not being able to go to Copenhagen, and that's why Pixie and Cheatin were even there in the first place. They were second place going into the last few games. Unfortunately, their last three games were their worst three games. They still got a fourth place. Incredibly impressive, but they could have actually potentially won it if they kept up the same momentum. Then we had an Asian team in fifth. We had MK Papa. I've been told I'm pronouncing that wrong. I apologize. And Shalom in fifth place. An Asia team. Asia performed so well at this LAN event. They had four out of their seven teams that were going actually qualified to the finals. And one of them getting top five was by far the most impressive performance from a small region outside of EU and NA. Then we had Chubbs and Bryce, which was my dark horse coming into Copenhagen. A lot of people doubted me saying that I shouldn't be hyping them up as much as I did, but they played really well. They got, I think, a fourth, a sixth, and an 11th in FNCS NA this year. Like, they have been really consistent and not enough people are talking about them. So I'm going to try and do my best to give them as much praise as I can. Unfortunately, there were only a few places from being on the podium. They definitely could have got a top four with just one more decent game, but they played really, really well. We had Cold and Acorn in seventh place, a very impressive finish for a team that was contested by Vico and Pink. They pulled off a win on day one. A lot of people questioning why I didn't have them in my top three or top five going into the finals, but I just thought there's just no way con by a team that good they could pull it off twice. And honestly, I think a seventh place is incredibly impressive, especially with Vico and Pink, the team contested them, coming in 10th. They both managed to do really well from a split that's good, but for two teams to get top 10 in the finals is incredibly impressive. We then had Yomzo and Rise. No surprise there to see them high, but I think a lot of people were expecting them to finish a little bit higher on the leaderboard with Uncon Castle and Gas Station. A good split, one they've been dominating from on NA, but just on an international stage, they did well, just not as well as some people were hoping. Reet and Rituals getting a ninth place. They played so well on day one and in the finals. Again, Reet and Cooper, sorry, Reet and Mero, the only two controller players in the top 10, but having two of the 10 controller players that were there in the finals making the top 10 is incredibly impressive in my opinion. Then we had uh, Vico and Pink in 10th, like I talked about. Queasy and Venno in 11th. Now, if you saw posts on the timeline about Queasy and Venno, you probably would have thought they came in last. People talking about how they underperformed, how, how Venno's talking about quitting Fortnite, Queasy talking about how bad the zones were. You really would have thought they came in last, but obviously being one of the all-time favorites, I think anything but a top three and people would have been disappointed. I will take this moment to say that basically anyone who said they're retiring, I would give them a little bit to, you know, come down from the emotions. There was a lot of high emotions after the tournament. A lot of players, Savage and Vadil talking about quitting. We had v Venno talking about how he was going to quit. We had players like Death really in their feels on the timeline. And I think, unfortunately, you just have to expect that they're just emotional. I think when they get home, they're going to reflect, realize there's things they could have done differently. They still ultimately love the game and they're going to keep grinding or they will actually quit. I don't want to just say these guys are all being emotional. They're all just being drama queens and, you know, they're all just lying. I think a lot of them really are emotional right now and some of them very well could quit. They've been professional players for four or five years now. They could be, you know, finally just done with the game and ready to move on with their lives. Maybe they're also just waiting to see what happens next because we didn't actually get an announcement at the end of this tournament. A lot of people very, very hopeful. We had a massive announcement at the end of World Cup. They announced Season X at Invitational. They announced Chapter 4. At this event, we're hoping they're going to keep up the streak, but we heard nothing. We do have a lot of rumors circulating 
circulating around Ninja talking about how he's actually filmed something officially with Fortnite, which makes sense. It might be for a new season or whatever this throwback is or the new chapter. The black hole was leaked at the event, potentially. There's a lot of hype around Fortnite right now, but I'm still seeing a lot of people saying they think that Fortnite's over. Levin tweeted out saying, I love you all. And people thought this was like a goodbye. At the end of the broadcast, Zeke got really emotional. And a lot of people thought it was like a goodbye to competitive Fortnite. I think it was just a phenomenal event and they were just emotional. And I really think it's a sign that good things are hopefully going to come in the future. I obviously don't know, but they've reached all time peak record numbers since World Cup. The viewership was amazing. The, the crowd was amazing. The whole sentiment towards Fortnite was ultimately amazing. I don't know why they would go from that to being like, all right, well, by competitive Fortnite, like we've been through far worse than this. We're on a high right now. We probably should be thinking about how it's all gonna die. If next month is a one month long season like they're talking about and it's a big throwback season, that could mean potentially we don't really have any tournaments or at least any major tournaments. Maybe it's just cash cups. I would love to see them use the nostalgia to run like a winter royale, but that might be a bit hopeful. But I'm pretty confident come like January, we will have a new season with a new FNCS in a new chapter. And I'm hoping they change the game mode to something. I kind of do want to see like a solo FNCS, maybe a trios. Don't really want to see squads, but ultimately I think they probably will just do solo or do FNCS. One of the main issues with the grand finals, if you watched it or if you talked to any of the players, was the lag. It was a little bit laggy. And the bigger the game mode, the more lag there is. There's more players together in a close proximity, more players stay alive further into the game, and it creates more lag. So I think Epic is going to be very aware of that. I think they will avoid doing trios or squads for this reason. There are also a lot of elements that go into the lag of the finals. I want to make an entire other video talking about what is the main component of lag that not enough people talk about, which is actually the observers whenever they run a broadcast the lag spikes massively i've been running a bunch of data with osirian if you've seen them on twitter they pull a bunch of data from the game files and i really think we're onto something here with why the servers are so bad when it gets to a grand finals that is broadcasted but again i'll make that video down the line if you're in my stream doing the watch party you probably know you probably heard me talk about it but across the board it was a fantastic tournament canada and ages coming in 18th holding thomas and malabuka out with 5-1 on spawn now i say 5-1 technically the last game they kind of just split it and left but Thomas and Malabuka were definitely the ones dropping on the worst loot trying to grab the loot and run away with it they really weren't taking a big fight they finished in 39th place overall so 100% the win goes to Kanata and ages for that but even winning the spawn fight still cost them and they only finished in 18th again I talked about it we did have Savage and Badil in 36th down the leaderboard you know an underwhelming performance for them they were incredibly upset after winning day two that would have had their confidence quite high. I talked about it in my last video. They had a lot of good zones on day two. Day three, all the zones were pulling towards Rumble Ruins. That clearly wasn't really working for them, and it did cost them. And a lot of other teams were feeling this as well. Unfortunately, OCE, Alex, and Worthy, our only representative from my home region, they came in second last. They went up against Moneymaker and Fenean, and they just couldn't hold up. They were struggling. They didn't walk off the spawn fight enough, and again, it cost them. And that was a story for most of the contested teams. Some contested teams managed to pull it off but pretty much every single one of them did underperform all across the board it was a fantastic weekend i absolutely loved making all the content around it it felt like fortnite was back on top the viewership was insane like i said everyone really felt like they were getting behind fortnite competitive again and i hope epic carries this momentum into the next year and especially into the next chapter